Oh man, what a month it's been. Jesus Christ, it's been a rough one. Uh, Kaylee's been sick, my kids have been sick. It's been all over the freaking place. Uh, hence why we haven't been recording much. But let's put that aside. So it finally happened. Shutter decided to start sending me screeners. Now, I didn't get this till like a day or two before the movie came out. But I'm now on their list, and I'm going to be sent screeners for Shudder. It finally happened. After how long have we been talking about this? I'm like the number one freaking promoter, so it's about time. So that's awesome. And I was sent Christmas Bloody Christmas. So uh, this is the second film we've gotten this month with a uh, killer Santa Claus, except for in Violent Night. Santa's a good guy and fighting for people. And in this movie, Santa is a uh, villain and is out slashing people. So this is a throwback 80s slasher style uh, Christmas film, which I know a lot of people love these kinds of movies. So this is one to be excited about. And another reason to be excited about it is because it's Joe Bagos uh, who directed bliss and vfw um and i'm a big fan of vfw so i i was i was very excited to see what he was going to be up to next and when i saw that he was making this robotic killer santa claus movie i was you know in uh in the spirit of 80s slashers i was like well i mean sign me up obviously um so what's this movie about it's about a killer robot Santa Claus on Christmas. I mean, what else do you need to know? It, it, it kind of reminds me a tiny bit of the premise of, you know, something like the Child's Play remake. Um, a, a, it's not a toy per se. It's just, it's a, um, a Santa Claus that's put into toy stores and they get recalled last minute because they're having malfunctions and they're built by like, uh, the, the army or <laughs> something ridiculous. Uh, and of course this one malfunctions. It hasn't been recalled quite yet. And it goes on a murderous rampage. Now it's just a, you know, it, it's obviously just like a dude in a suit. Um, but so they don't really make it look robotic, right? It just, it's clearly just a human, but, um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's very humanoid. Uh, so it just looks like a Santa. But the actor, like, moves like either robot to a degree. Um, so, okay, first things first. Um, I thought this movie was super cool. I, I will say um, that the screener we got, and I hope this isn't an issue going forward with these screeners, but um, the screener we got was in, like, some weird, uh, some weird... Uh, like, it wasn't HD, right? It wasn't 1080p or even 720p. It was some weird number. <laughs> it was like 536p or something. And that was like the highest quality you could bring it to. Uh, now, I know Bagos likes to make films look grainy and old, like a VHS or something. Like, that's his style. And that's how this film's done, much like a lot of his films. He's an 80s uh, a file and, and wants to have that kind of uh, aesthetic to it. Um, but that should still be in HD. Like VFW was released in 4k. So, you know, you, you can still release it in, in the highest quality possible and, and show off the best effect of the video. So whatever I got was, was pretty terrible looking. Um, so I didn't get to see the film as clear as I would have liked. Um, now, um, with it being this, robotic killer Santa Claus movie. I think that, um, say hello to my little robotic cat. Um, I think that this film would immediately get thought of as silly and goofy. And weirdly, the film is played completely straight throughout. Like there's comedy in it, but it's straight comedy, right? It's, it's, it's not, parodying anything this isn't some uh like uh you know slapsticky kind of tongue-in-cheek like 
self-aware kind of comedy like you would expect from a movie like this like no and i think that's i think this was really great about this film is that if you really go back to like the early slashers right if you go back to the heyday of the 80s slasher no matter how ridiculous the the premise is or or what it is right like if you take silent night deadly night like nowadays a lot of those kinds of movies like oh it's a killer couch it's a killer velocipaster or some shit right it's always played for gag sharknado whatever but in the 80s they were like serious and that's what made them funny and great was just like wow this is so ludicrous but they're taking it so seriously like they're actually trying to be like a good film or like try to be scary and like most of the time they're not at all um but they just have that charm to them and and that's what he's going for here he's doing a very straight film the characters are are being funny but in a very natural way and that's that's like the second thing to talk about here is that while the characters are very very juvenile and very crass if you've seen a if you've seen a vagos movie you know exactly what to expect you know it's like Tarantino for like immature teenagers. <laughs> That's what it feels like. It feels like, uh, you know, it, an immature Tar uh, Tarantino wrote this um, as, as like one of his first movies and, and uh, whatnot. It, it just has that kind of flavor to it where it's like really dialogue heavy. You know, people are, people are um, arguing about pop culture, right? Cause the, the, the two people in this, the main characters, they, they, uh, run a record shop together. The the chick is the owner uh, who runs the place, and and the guy she's hanging out with is, is her employee. And they love to just go back and forth on what albums are good. And and she has this theory about bands who cut off their hair, and um, you know, then she gets into films that she loves. And man, huge shout out here, huge shout out to the fact that Book of Shadows, Blair Witch Two which I've been championing on this channel forever. Uh, and I might actually even be able to get a really cool surprise interview for you guys uh, one day. We'll see. Um, and also uh, mention of Pet Cemetery 2, which I'm in another huge fan of. So to get an actual like in-movie reference to how cool those movies are and that there's somebody else out there that loves those was so rad. Uh, so I just had to say that because how often do you get to hear Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2 get mentioned in a positive way in a movie? I'm going to say not very often. So big, huge, amazing thumbs up on that because I loved hearing it. Um, but anyways, so there is all this like uh, in talk about pop culture, which Tarantino loves to do. But the film is, is extremely juvenile and crass. So the characters now... That could be very off-putting to some people. I could see that. I could 100% see these characters being like, oh my God, they, they cuss every five seconds. You know, they, they, these, people are, these people are annoying and this and that. And I do have to agree they are annoying to a degree. But that's the point. And it's also very authentic. I was a heavy drinker in my younger years, in my early 20s. And I went to the bar a lot and I've hung out with people. I mean, I know these people, the people in this movie. I know those guys. Like, I don't actually know these actors. I don't actually know these people who made the movie. But if you've hung out at the bar, especially if like you were part of like the punk scene or whatever, you know, these people, <laughs> like these are such perfect representations of kind of these like almost hipster type guys and chicks that hang out in record stores or own record stores and they think their opinion is all you know high and mighty and you know if you like something that's popular you're lame and and here let me tell you why this re record's the best and everybody else's opinion is shit and all that that high fidelity type of um you know uh, conversation and thought process i don't know what the hell that was um so uh i i I did find them slightly annoying and irritating, but in a very sincere and honest way, a way that like when I was back in the bar days, 
I would have been one of them. I would have been there with them and, and having those conversations and I would have been annoying. And it's because I've moved away from drinking that, you know, when you're hanging around drunk people, when you're sober, they're fucking annoying. And these people are kind of like that. So I, I, even though I did find them to be off putting to a degree, I found that to be the, the point. And, 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 and it really landed for me in that way because I know these people and I know they exist and, and I did end up really liking them um, throughout the remainder and I, and I really quite enjoyed the chemistry between them. I actually thought there was something palpable there and, and I think they sold kind of this um, unspoken uh, romantic thing that's like unsaid and, and can't be said, you know, that kind of like um, playground flirtation where you don't want to admit you like someone, so you're like overly mean to them to prove that you're not actually interested in them. That kind of shit. Uh, the the couple in a movie or couple in real life that hang out all the time, and you're like, oh my god, just fuck already, just just do it. Oh my god, you guys are so clearly into each other, and they're like, what us? No way. Um, so I, I did really like that. As far as the the kills go, um, the kills are a little hit and miss for me, for sure. I think there's some great ones, and I think there's some missed opportunities. Uh, I would, of course, hope for a director's cut that has more gore, but I don't, I doubt it exists. I really wish we would have um, seen every kill on screen and that we would have lingered a little bit more on the kills because I think there is some really cool effects here and, and everything in the film, from what I can tell, is practical. Um, so, Big kudos to them on that. Uh, I just really wish we could have spent a little more time um, on those kills. But some of the ones we do get are pretty rad. And once again, had I been able to actually see them, and I will buy this movie. Uh, I definitely want it in my collection. I think it is absolutely going to become um, a, a cult Christmas film. I think people are definitely going to be throwing this on every year for here, um, from here on. Uh, it'll go right next to something like Silent Night, Deadly Night, super well. It'll be a it'll be a perfect companion film for that. Um, and even the later sequels that are getting released through Vestron, that three, four, and five pack that they're releasing for super cheap. Uh, that and the Dennis set that they're releasing, they just give those Vestrons away now. It's crazy how cheap those things are, uh, which is great for me. Uh, especially since I own every one of them and am continuing to collect them, especially when they're putting out rad shit like Silent Night, Deadly Night 3 through 5 and Dennis 1 and 2 for like 12 bucks. It's ridiculous. Um, but yeah, so the kills are... Um, they're good. They're good. They're not amazing because while there might be a couple that are, I really wish the couple that are were the rest of the film. Now, that could be a budgetary issue. It could be anything. I don't know. But for my own personal taste. Now, I am desensitized. And a lot of people are like, oh my god, the kills, this and that. They did it with Violent Night. They were like, oh man, it's so violent and this and that. I thought Violent Night was super tame. Right? So my, my bar is a little different than some. But this being a horror movie review channel and knowing my audience, if you're like me... You're going to be like, man, I wish this was more. I wish there was more on screen kills. I wish there was, it was more violent. I wish we saw more practicals, this and that. But what we do get on screen is pretty cool. Um, nothing we haven't seen before, nothing super inventive, nothing crazy, but cool. You know, some axes to the face, stuff like that. Looks good. I'm about it, right? So that's all good and, and fine. A uh, little disappointed in the kills, but definitely not like. A low point for the film at all um, a super high point for the film uh, the way it looks from what I can tell right I'll, I'll hopefully get a better look at it in a future HD 4k release they release VFW in 4k as I said and that was only like 10 bucks so I'm hoping we can get a Christmas bloody Christmas for someone around that price on 4k and boom that'll be an instant buy um, so looks because it's got a great uh, color scheme, and um, they really they really hit those Christmas colors, right? And they and and they and they like to flood you with a lot of like green, red, neons, which great choice. 
I love that kind of shit. You know, that old school uh, giallo feel with the really intense, bright um, neon type colors and, and making them Christmas colors makes, of course, perfect sense. Um, I really liked uh, Santa. I thought he was cool. And, and, and once we do get into the more Terminator aspects, because this movie's clearly in, insanely inspired by uh, Terminator, you'll see, uh, especially in the end, very, very Terminator. When we do get into that, when, when Santa is starting to uh, show his uh, chassis, um, all that kind of stuff, the practicals and all that, I thought were really, really cool. And in the end, it gets like, you know, you know, I don't know if that's a spoiler. I, I wouldn't expect. I mean, Santa takes some damage and you get to see some of them. And I think it looks fucking awesome. All that stuff is really, really cool. And for a budget, which I'm sure is very low, they did a phenomenal job with that stuff. And um, lastly, on the major pros, uh, the music, which this is kind of a gimme, so to speak. I mean, I guess not, but for the most part, this is the kind of thing I would expect them to nail in these. I feel like these kinds of movies really do a great job with the music that, you know, whoever they hire for that with the synth soundtrack and stuff, they, they obviously have a passion for it. And this one delivers as do a lot of these. Um, so the music is, is, is great. And, um, and really complements the film very well. Um, so it was a surprise to, for this film to take itself seriously and to build characters and to not um, be super goofy and to not have like completely throwaway characters. This, this feels like, uh, as I said, it, it kind of feels like a high fidelity written by a juvenile Quentin Tarantino um, with some pretty decent gore thrown in as an homage to Terminator. Um, that's the best way I could describe the film. Um, so if you're looking forward to it, I think this is absolutely worth seeing for sure. It's going to be on Shutter tomorrow um, and it is currently in theaters. And if you're a Bagos fan and it's near you, absolutely support the shit out of it because stuff like this deserves your money and your time and attention. Even if they can't deliver on every single little thing like, you know, kills that we might want. Uh, like where it's like an missed opportunity. I'm sure there's a reason. If Bagos could have given it to us, he would have. I mean, I've seen enough of his work now to know that the guy wants to put every kill on screen. He wants it to be glorious. He wants it to be memorable. And sometimes you're just limited by budgets or by whatever. So I think this is a I think this is a great effort. I think this is this landed really really well. And I think this will become, as I said, a yearly annual. Christmas uh, film for everyone to watch. So um, I, I was pleased with it. Uh, I don't know what Kaylee's thoughts are exactly. Um, I, I think she liked it, but I don't think she liked it as much as me. I think she was a little less on it just because of like, she was a little more disappointed in the kills, but uh, I, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it and heavily recommend it for anyone who's into eighties Christmas slasher movies and they're kind of wanting to get back to that feel of, the Silent Night, Deadly Nights, and so on. Um, so, another win for Joe Vegos. Not surprised. And once again, Dora Madison makes an appearance because it isn't a Joe Vegos film until Dora Madison shows up. So, uh, cool to see her, even if it's not for a long time. I expected to see her. And when she came up, I was like, there she is. <laughs> there, there she is. Of course she's here. It's like Johnny Depp in a Tim Burton movie or something. It's like, where is he? Okay, there he is. Although, usually with Johnny Depp, he's like the main character. So, um, you know, he's not like a background character. Uh, but, or should I say like Peter Jason in a John Carpenter movie, right? Like in his, in his more like mid-range films, like in the Mouth of Madness, uh, They Live or something. It's like, oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. Or George Buckflower or something. You know, those characters that you're always waiting. It's like, oh, there he is. I knew he was going to show up. Um, that's Dora Madison. So, yeah, she does make an appearance. It was cool to see her. And uh, I'm really looking forward to rewatching this in better quality. Uh, on Shutter, it should probably be, and that'll be the true test. Is on Shutter here pretty soon? Uh, in like two hours, uh, I'm gonna look and see to, uh, if if the quality is better because this screener was shit. Uh, not to knock the screener because I'm happy to have gotten it finally, but man, it. 
I hope the next one doesn't look this bad. Let's hope it's in 1080 at least. <laughs> so anyway, guys, uh, I look forward to hearing your guys' thoughts and see if any of you go to the theater and check this out and let me know what you think of the quality of the film and, uh, you know, both the picture and, and, of course, the quality of the film as a whole. Uh, so Merry Christmas to everybody, even though it's way early. But we got the Christmas tree up. We're in the Christmas spirit, even though everyone is about to become a spirit because everybody's so sick in this freaking family right now. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, we love you guys. See you soon. Bye.